All right, everyone, it's time to talk about some polling. Um, link in the description, you can look at it for yourself. It couldn't be more stark. Um, Donald Trump is literally crushing it at this point. He's doing better than I expected. I expected there was always a better than 50-50 chance that Donald Trump would return to the presidency. I don't think, by the way, that any of the legal cases, the persecution, I, I don't think they really changed the metric. In fact, I, I, I don't even know which uh, outcome for the Alvin Bragg case is better for Trump, whether he's found guilty or not guilty. If he's found not guilty, all of a sudden, you know, the Trump is dangerous thing sort of dies down. I think that would help him with certain independent voters. But if he's found guilty, because it's quite clearly persecutorial lawfare, it probably helps him with his core uh, turnout. So, honestly, I don't know which one is better for him. I don't think that there's any losing outcome at all in that particular case. I'm looking at the polling. There's new polling available from the other day. And it actually astonishes me. I expected Trump to tack well ahead of where he was in 2020, <clears throat> but I expected it to be more like 2016. So you'd have like an even Stevens. He's a point behind, he's a point behead, uh, ahead. You, you've got a scatter shot of polling. That's not what we're seeing, though. We're seeing in about two-thirds of general election polling, Trump is ahead. In the aggregate, he's ahead. He's ahead in five of the competitive states. He's arguably competitive in a couple of states that weren't even competitive in 2016. And in some cases, the gap is growing. You look at Nevada. You look at Georgia. I think those are off the table for the Biden campaign. All of their bravado about trying to blue Texas or try to take Florida, eh, I, I don't see that in the cards. Unless there is an enormous sea change, I don't think that that happens. The fact is that Donald Trump is probably going to crush Joe Biden in the election. My original metric was, I think that he wins. He gets a couple of those competitive states back, he gets over 270, he returns to office. It seems like the American people, though, partially through recency bias and partially through understanding reality, uh, having rejected the legacy media's astroturf narrative that the Joe Biden economy is perfect, everything's fine, you know, you're not saying, you don't, don't go to the grocery store on your own. Have somebody else shop for you that's too young to vote so that you don't see the prices and get sticker shock. People, I think, are correctly gauging that Biden has been an abject failure. And Donald Trump is likely not to just win, but to crush him by a margin that's larger than his victory in 2016. I now favor that with greater than 50-50 odds. Um, I can't say much about Congress. We have to wait for more polling on that. I, uh, currently, I favor the GOP to take the Senate but lose the House. And so that's more of, you know, it's sort of a zero-sum game. It's very helpful if the Democrats, by the way, do kill the filibuster. Well, Donald Trump can do whatever he wants with a simple Senate majority. I'm sure he'll be very thankful for your gift, and I don't understand why you're choosing election season to front the basic premise, considering the fact that your guy is behind in virtually every poll in the competitive states. I think that might be a bad idea. But, I mean, they're Democrats. They're acting like Republicans more and more lately. Maybe they'll be the ones that start snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. And more power to them. If you want to lose, uh, I, I approve of that. I think that's a good idea. Wish you'd lose on the state level, but I'm in Vermont where it's like 80% Democrats, so... Yeah, other than Rutland and the Northeast Kingdom, there ain't a lot of Republicans around here, let alone libertarians like myself. Now, I think that at this point, we've got a better than 50-50 shot that Donald Trump doesn't just win, but he wins, as he would say, bigly. That is, he's ahead in every one of the starting, in the aggregate, he's, in the aggregate, he's ahead in every single one of the competitive states. Um, in recent polling, it looks like he might be trailing in Michigan and Wisconsin, but that doesn't matter. He's ahead in Nevada, Arizona. They're fortified, so I don't expect him to win the state. I'm, 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 I don't believe that Trump can win Arizona without like a 10-point lead. He wins Georgia, North Carolina, probably Pennsylvania. He's competitive, it seems, in Minnesota, Virginia, New Hampshire. Uh, by what electoral method can he lose, actually, at that point? If he only gets half of those states and he picks off any of the lean blue states, he's won the election. He's automatically over 270. Pennsylvania is probably going to be the pivot. It looks like it's advantage Trump there as well. And turnout for Biden, I imagine, will be depressed. In 2020, there was higher turnout. Uh, beyond the ballot printers going burr, there was higher turnout than that had been in 2016 for the Democratic Party. <clears throat> Part of this was predicated on what was going on with lockdowns. Well, that's not a thing right now, now, is it? 
Instead, people are voting and being motivated in part by the fact that the economy sucks, the border is wide open, crime is up, and we have multiple wars that we're involved in. Those are all disadvantaged Biden because he is the current incumbent. He's, he's the one seeking re-election uh, from that capacity. People, therefore, can judge the Trump presidency and what happened then uh, against the Biden presidency. And in the end, I think they're going to favor Trump, generally speaking. They may say orange man bad, but they say, well, orange man was pretty good for my wallet. Orange man wasn't starting wars. You know, under orange man, there was at least an attempt on the border, cock blocked by congressional Republicans mostly, and then finally freed up by a federal court system that actually did its job for once. Um, at this point, I would favor Trump to win with over 300 electoral points. In fact, that tax pretty close to the RCP prediction based on the polling. And you should always use them because that's an unbiased, non-cherry-picked aggregate. Uh, I, I don't believe in Nate Silver's aggregate. He ironically shows Trump further ahead, I think, right now. I don't believe that aggregate either. He has a tendency to cook his numbers. That's why he, uh, he got lucky uh, with a one-off prediction many years ago in like uh, 2012 or something like that and now he's disappeared from the fray because nobody gives a fuck what he says anymore and he was already having problems at that point he basically just got lucky i think that he tr uh, crushes him i think that donald trump is likely to win at least four of the competitive states <clears throat> that are generally being polled for and as an addition to that probably wins one of the other vulnerable states for which we have less polling so again Maine, New Hampshire, Minnesota, Virginia. Those are, those are the big four. They lean left, they lean towards the Dems, especially New Hampshire, but they're doable. And what we've seen also with turnout at the rallies and, and, and so forth that have been held is that Joe Biden, when he goes out in public, two people are listening to him. Optically speaking, that's pretty poor. Donald Trump goes to Brooklyn and gets... Uh, according to the NYPD, 8,000 people, several times the estimate of who was going to show up by the Trump campaign itself. Upwards, potentially, of 25,000, depending on who you ask. And there's a huge propaganda war over pictures from ABC News at that uh, rally currently, and it doesn't really matter. He goes to New Jersey. He gets at least 80,000 people to show up at the rally. 80,000. In far blue New Jersey, by the way. This is core democratic territory, and he's still getting you know, the population of a decent-sized city to show up. Yeah, some of those people came in from points abroad. They came in from Amish country or something. A lot of them were New Jerseyans. While that doesn't give him the state, it shows that he actually has enthusiasm. People want to show up and hear Trump speak. Nobody wants to show up and hear Biden speak. When we watch him, like when I watch him live, I, why am I watching? It's because I think he might trip. He might say something completely stupid. He'll stumble over his words and meander off into la-la land. With Trump, it's like, okay, it's the dawn. I like hearing his platform. Like at the Libertarian Convention, he's <laughs> literally saying he wants to commute the sentence of the Silk Road founder. I think that's a pretty good olive branch. It's a good starting off point for uh, Liberty Rising. Uh, but he might also say something zany. But when he says that it's actually funny, when Biden does it, the only humor involved is, oh, God, Joe's melting down again. Oh, dear, whatever shall I do? I see a huge differential for enthusiasm. I see a huge differential building in turnout. I see a huge differential in polling. And I've got to assume, based on the last few elections, there is always the possibility that the polls are underestimating Donald Trump. And in a three-way race, you know, with RFK Jr., he does even a little bit better. He's two, three points ahead in all of the swing states when you uh, measure that metric. He's upwards of 10 points ahead in some of them. North Carolina is probably off the table entirely. Georgia and Nevada may very soon follow suit. Well, that gets you pretty close to 270. You only need one more state. So Wisconsin or Minnesota or Virginia or Pennsylvania or Michigan or, or anywhere else. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't see how he can possibly lose. The only reason why I keep in mind that there's the possibility is because ballot printers can go burr, but I don't know how they can deploy them in the right places because some of these states have defortified. If you get a defortified, partially, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Wisconsin, that's already over 270. That's literally all you need. He's already got the votes now in states that aren't going to have a fortified election. I'm sure that the Bloombergs of the world will try to change that before November. 
But right now, um, if I was a betting man, yeah, I'd be betting on Donald Trump to win, and it seems like the majority of people agree with me. That's about all. Peace out.